my name is Joyce Hansen, and um, we live in the Denver metro area, have for 24 years now. My name is John Hansen, uh, married to this lovely gal to my left, and uh, uh, also lived in the Denver metro area for the last 24 years. And uh, by occupation, I am an engineer, uh, worked in the aerospace industry for many, many years. I grew up in an urban area in New Jersey um, with a blue collar white family. It was during a period, it was like late 60s, early 70s. So there were a lot of racial tensions for sure. So I was super aware of it. Um, I had black friends, um, but it was interesting. We never talked about. My background <clears throat> is very different than Joyce's. Uh, I grew up in a very rural area of the Midwest. At one point, John and I went on a, a mission team to plant a church in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, apartheid was still well and alive in, in South Africa at that time. What was interesting in starting the church there is that it was the first time I've been in a situation where race was talked about. We, and not always positively by many people, but it was talked about. It was right out there. If people were interested in studying the Bible and wanting to learn what God had to say, and what God's standard was, that's all, always something that we would talk about. And that's always something that would be addressed. And, and ongoingly, we would share about it because it was so obvious. But I remember thinking over my years in South Africa, wow, you know, this is so intense. This is so sad that things got to this point here. How can it just, it was so wrong, you know, seeing what was happening towards the, the African people. But thinking, I'm glad the United States isn't like that. Mm -hmm and not being in touch with what had happened and was continuing to happen in my own country that I'd come from. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I'm a Midwestern guy. I am a meat and potatoes type of individual through and through. Uh, <laughs> if we're not wearing jeans and a, and a cap on our head, it's just awkward. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's just, um, if, if things aren't a certain way, then I am out of my comfort zone. And um, so now here we are in a country where people are classed in, in a multitude of ways. Um, the whites are classed into different groups. Uh, the two main white mm -hmm. classes were the Afrikaans and the English and tension that existed between the different tribes. There was uh, then the, the coloreds, which really were a mix of, of black and white. Uh, the, the separateness, the, the paranoia, the not understanding uh, of each other was, was very much obvious. It was, it, was, it was in your face kind of thing. You could not ignore it. God wasn't trying to build a uniform church and blending, if you will, of cultures and melding them into a uniform unit. No, it was bringing people together on the basis of forgiveness and love and, and really trying to understand, but it was also an embracing each other's differences mm -hmm. and in cultures. Mm -hmm. And that was incredibly uncomfortable. So I'd like to share a story of racial intimidation, a time when I was present, mm -hmm. when it happened. Went away with um, friends from church for the weekend to the mountains to see the colors changing. And, and on the way back, um, we decided to stop for breakfast in a little town on the way back. So we walk into this cafe and it was really kind of odd. We felt, we felt a little uncomfortable because we were told that if we ordered food, it would take a good long time for it to take, for it to, to be ready. 
And even before the waitress came to take our, our order, someone else came, told us the same thing. It was going to be a good long wait if we got food. Ordered our food while we were sitting there, suddenly someone, a man gets up, stands in the middle of this little cafe. And then we realized he was the town, he was a policeman. He might've been the town sheriff, we're not sure exactly. But as he's standing there, just before he left, he turned around, had to turn actually completely around to look at our table, put his hand on his gun and looked at us and said, now you have a good day and turned and walked out. It was unquestionable what was happening. To see my brother and sister singled out um, was just, it, it was heartbreaking, it was maddening, um, and for no good reason other than the color of their skin. They're close to our age. <sighs> Um, there seemed to be no good reason, except it was very obvious that they were being singled out because of the color of their skin. And it broke my heart. Mm. I'm just hanging out with our friends and, and we're having a good time. Uh, you know, this is, uh, their first time out in this part of Colorado. And so, uh, it was like, okay, this is a great experience. Uh, it had been going overall pretty, pretty well. We're having a, a great time. When we got to the door before coming in and they said, it's really busy in here and it's going to be a good 45 minutes before you get served. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm thinking, because I'm looking around, I go, it doesn't look that busy to me. It's busy, but it's not that busy. When this cop, uh, you know, was there kind of hovering nearby and as my wife says, put his hand on his gun, look at our table and say, you people have a nice day. Um, and, and he departed pretty quickly. He, he made his, you know, did his intimidation thing and then walked out. Uh, but certainly, you know, made it very, very clear where you, you guys are not welcome here. You know, here it is, uh, you know, we're, we're talking the... 2019, you know, we're well into the 21st century, and it's like, my goodness, things like this are still happening and going on. Jesus definitely addressed social issues. He he did regularly during his times. He he didn't um, he didn't try to throw the rug over it. Um, I, I was thinking earlier about passage in Ephesians 4, where it talks about being one in spirit. And I was thinking that, you know, we can ha come from different backgrounds, we can have different opinions, but, you know, when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter because God wants us to be one in spirit. And the same thing with, uh, you know, it's what I really learned uh, in uh, through our church is like, yeah, maybe I'm feeling uncomfortable, but so is my brother and sister next to me. Mm -hmm. They're feeling uncomfortable in my culture, mm -hmm. but yet they have a willingness to be able to do that. And, uh, and, and it's okay to be uncomfortable. We are going to hurt each other's feelings. We are going to say things or something is going to transpire that offends either us or offend somebody else, wittingly or unwittingly. And having been in South Africa to see the tremendous amounts of oppression and the ghastly stories that we could talk about of, of things that happened to individuals, mm -hmm. but through it at, to be able to see the power of forgiveness mm -hmm. and, and to be able to say, yeah, this happened to me, you did this to me, but I'm willing to forgive. And let's really try to, to understand each other. And uh, to me, that is Christ's message. That's God's message is having the spirit of forgiveness. And when applied, it's powerful. It's amazing. I, I just wanna say, I appreciate John's um just being willing to be uncomfortable. Um, 
since I know him better than anyone, I believe, mm -hmm. um, I've seen him for, what, our 37 years together now, being married, and I know it really has been uncomfortable for him at times. It's really, at, it was really out of his comfort zone, uh, both of ours, but particularly his, being raised in a small 200-person town in the Midwest, um, to, to even go to South Africa, to even um, have conversations now with people of different backgrounds. Um, I just see him often stepping out of what would be his comfort zone. So, and I think that's very, that's Christ-like. It's what Jesus is calling all of us to. Thanks for watching this episode of We Are the Denver Church of Christ. If you'd like to see more videos like this or other inspiring messages, please subscribe to our YouTube channel below. We'd like for you to get to know us more and for us to get to know you more. The best way to do that is to go to our website, denverchurchofchrist.org. You can find that information in our description below. Check it out. And if you'd like to do so, you can fill out our contact form. That's a way that we can get in touch with one another. Or you can simply leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Have a great day and see you at the next episode.